Hey guys, so before we talk about animating the effects such as the lantern and uh, special visual effects, I want to talk about exporting and how I export my files in preparation to import them later into After Effects. This is something that should have been in the previous episode, but I'm going to talk about it in the beginning of this one instead. First of all, let's talk about exporting your files. In Flash, you can export your files into numerous different formats. The best and ideal way for a lot of animators to export their file into is usually an image sequence. You go to File, Export, and Export Movie, and select which format you want. A PNG sequence, an animated GIF, a JPEG sequ sequence. I usually go for something that's uh, either a TIF sequence or a PNG sequence because it's transparent. From here on, you can adjust the overall size of the export or the DPI, and then when you hit export, it'll just export you a series of image sequences. And if your After Effects file matches the frames per second, you don't need to readjust the timing since it's all timed out in image sequences. Exporting image sequences are the easiest ones to understand. It's straightforward and a lot of programs read them. Because of its bitmap based format, it doesn't glitch as often. This means that it's not vector, meaning it's not flexible for resolution changes. Saving it as a PNG sequence may sacrifice some colors, depending how you compress your files. With that being said, the file size can be big. Actually, I'm not going to export anything because I realized that if you go through this route, it actually exports the whole flash file. Ideally, this is alright, but for me, it's not. As you can see, my flash file has a lot of scenes. And in these scenes, I actually saved previous steps that I did in reference for this tutorial. Let's talk about scenes. Scenes are like pre-comps or compositions in After Effects. They have their own sequence, their own timeline, and their own properties. I, for example, use scenes to save previous steps. In case I don't like the new step that I've taken, I can always go back and use those instead. You can see all your scenes if you click Window, Other Panels, and Scene, and you'll have a list of all the scenes you have. You can create, rename, or delete scenes from here on. You can use the page up and the page down key to navigate through them. Honestly, just for organization's sake and for new time users, I just focus on each different file per thing. But since I use scenes for my own purposes, I'm going to talk about another way to export your files. Fortunately for regular Flash users, After Effects can take in .swf files, Shockwave Flash files. SWF files are used for Flash-based files that are online, so most of the games you play online on your browser, it could be made with Flash. So to make an SWF, you can actually do this through the same option you did for the image sequence, export movie and then Swift file. Or what I usually do is go to control and then you hit test scene. Test scene opens a new window where your scene is played alone, looping. Even though I was sure that I hid my layer for the rough animation, it's not like in Photoshop where it acknowledges this. In Flash, you have to right click your layer and hit guide. This tells Flash that it's a, only a guide on only a reference, so it'll not be shown in the .swf file. The cool thing about guides is even though you have them turned on, you can still hide the visibility of your rough animation or whatever you set your guide to. Also, when you hit test scene, it saves an SWF file next to your project file in the same folder where your file is. That's pretty cool, huh? So again, it's fast and efficient. You can be more specific in what you want to render. And most importantly, it's vector based. Meaning, if I import it into After Effects, I don't need to worry about its resolution. However, because it's vector based, it can be glitchy. Glitchy to the point where the file gets screwed midway through so you have to make a new copy. And if you have any other software involved, the SWF file isn't the most compatible for a lot of softwares. I only recommend this to people who are familiar with how Flash works. Now with that out of the way, let's move forward to animating our effects and our lantern stuff and maybe light the girl. Now, let's talk about giving our character lighting effects that extra oomph. So I'm thinking about having strong highlights on the girl to stage right. So I'm going to make a new layer and call it light effects or something, and then just gesture in some of the lighting effects. I'm doing this really quickly because I actually did this off recording, so I'm going to show you the finished product, but I just want to show you what it looks like when I start it. 
But as you can see, I'm approaching it from the store keys first, then the breakdown, etc, etc, then in between it, until you get something like this. So here are the highlights of the girl already fully in between, matching the animation. Like I explained earlier with Swift files and guides, I copied all of my original animation into a new scene and did my light effects there. Then I would make everything that's not the light a guide so you can't see it in the Swift file. So here's what I did, and then if I test a scene, it'll only show the light. And what's great again about the Swift file is that it'll make a copy of a Swift file already in your folder. The whole thing's automatic. But the reason why I want the character animation and her lighting effects separated is because I'm gonna comp it into After Effects and do the effects and the masking there. You might be wondering why I drew the lights as giant blobs and that they don't match the actual shape of the girl. But if I import them into After Effects later and combine the two, doing some masking out and some filter effects, you can do a lot of cool things. Just to give you guys an example of what I mean, here's a quick test I just did in After Effects. In the later episodes on post-production, I will show you guys how to do this. But I'm also stressing out why it's important to have the light effects and the girl as separate files. It's so that the light can use the girl's animation as a template, as a mask, so it actually stays within the girl's overall shape. Now that we have a basic idea and a basic foundation for the light effects on the girl, let's move on to some of the effects in the miscellaneous animations such as the lanterns. So next, we're going to talk about animating the lanterns. In the original movie, there are lanterns that float and rise behind the girl character. The way I made the lanterns is that they animate bobbing up and down left and right on its own and then I would just move them around in After Effects. Because there are just some things that Flash don't and After Effects do. So I'm just going to draw my half-assed lanterns here, but this time I'm using some of the rectangle tools, the circle tools, and I'm going to use a line tool to, to draw some of the contours. I usually set my lines to a bright neon green or neon red and just draw it on top of the shape I've made and make it match a contour. Using a paint bucket tool, I would fill in patterns according to the lines I just made. Once I'm done, I would double click on the lines themselves using the normal selection tool or you can set your eraser just to erase the lines only. Therefore, I'm removing the lines but in the end result, you'll get the pattern of the lantern down, without the lines. I would occasionally switch back to the brush tool and paint in some intricate designs myself. The designs on the lanterns are based off Irish folk art and Gaelic art. Because Crayon Dragon, I made it set in Ireland, so I want to capture some of that culture and art into the film. And the only way I could think of doing it, subtly, is through the lanterns, but throughout the film, there were some background elements that had that. What's cool about dealing with lines, well vector lines in Flash, is that they're easier to manipulate. Let's say I want to adjust the shape without having to redraw a lot. I could just click the edge of the shape, or just click on the line, and then just shift that around until I get a desired shape. Because I use shape tools that look simple and don't have a lot of information, it's easier to manipulate because there's not a lot of things going on. If I were to do this on my normal brush strokes, I would get so much angles and accents. Even for a vector software, it's still too much to work with. So if you just want to work with simple shapes and lines, using the tools here are the best way to go. Like what I'm doing right now. I'm then going to turn these lanterns into symbols. Let's hold on a second and talk about symbols in Flash. Symbols are little assets in Flash you can make that have their own little timeline. They're not like a scene where it's a completely new workspace. In Symbols, they have a workspace but it's more limited. But the great thing about Symbols is that you can use them anytime in any scene by just dragging them from your library. They're basically like a mini clip. There are two ways to create a symbol. If you hit insert and a new symbol, you can just make a new symbol from here. But since I already drew my lamps, you can just select the lamp, you right click your selection and you convert it into a new symbol. This opens a new window in which it's prompting you whether you want to turn it into whatever symbol you want. Graphics are ideal for animation, movie clips, and buttons are mostly used for flash action scripting, which is usually for coding games and stuff like that. So in other words, this stuff is useless garbage to me. For this case, I want the lantern to bob up and down left and right and make it loop in the same scene. While I have the lantern open, I can just animate it by just moving it up and down left and right. And I'm going to space them evenly, 3s and 4s, just so that it doesn't distract the audience too much. Then when I go back to my scene by clicking here, and if I press 
F5 randomly on the timeline, it'll loop until that point, but it will loop forever wherever I have that frame. And also if you notice, it's one giant frame of just two symbols, but if you look carefully, the symbols are playing the animation already in its own timeline. It's a pretty neat feature, but it's kind of confusing at first when you're still a newbie at Flash, so... If you don't want to work with symbols, you can just create a new Flash file, have your lantern animation and make it play there. If you're not really familiar or comfortable working with symbols, then this is the best way to go, either way. You can export it into an image sequence, a Swift file, either way you're still going to benefit for the future parts of the tutorial, which I'll address if you do decide to go through different routes. So after some time I managed to finish some more lanterns. As you can see I did them in separate scenes because again that's how I work. But now you'll notice that I have different varieties of different lanterns. Some of them are round, some of them are rectangular, and some of them move differently than others. And you'll notice that I made them all symbols. Well, graphic symbols so I could loop them. As you can see in my main timeline, I've stretched my frame to some random part of the timeline. So when I do play it, the graphic itself will loop until that part of the timeline I specified. Now with the lanterns done and out of the way, we can now move on to the pretty particles. The sparkly orbs that just float around the girl, I'm gonna work on those next. Now one could say that I could just do the particles in After Effects where they have the tools for it such as CC particles, particle playground those type of things. But I want to hand animate them because I want more creativity with these particles. So as you can see I'm approaching this using the straight ahead method. The straight ahead method is where I don't do it pose by pose but I just animate on the go. Meaning the frame that comes next or after the one I'm drawing is the one I'll draw next. This allows more flexibility for more spontaneous things like particles, things with a lot of constant motion. It's also best used for things you're not really sure how to animate technically, you don't know what the key poses are, so you're basically exploring that as you go. To me, it is the most fun way of animating, but at the same time, it's not the most ideal in terms of organizing your keys or your acting and keeping things like volume of all things. But like I said, it's really good for particles affects exactly what I'm doing now, which is just glittery, pretty, particle, bubbly stuff. By the way, in Flash, I'm pressing F7 to create a new blank key, then I'll draw in that key, and then I'll press F7 again to make a new frame. As you notice, I'm sometimes going back several frames previous so that I can go back and add some more drawings to some of my particles. I'm adding another ball, I'm adding more colors, I'm adding different patterns. At this point, I'm just making it up. I don't really have anything planned, but I'm just being spontaneous and I'm just having fun with it because that's basically what summarizes the overall scene. And a lot of the particle effects are just things like paint smudges and chalk strokes just rising from the ground. It's as if art itself is coming to life at the scene. The original shot does not have this effect, but I wanted to do it so that I could supplement the lanterns as it rises up. So again, I'm adding different colors, different patterns, just to make it visually interesting and visually fun. As much as I suck at animating things like effects and particles, I'm having a lot of fun animating this because it's just mindless animating at this point for me. And what's even more exciting is I'm thinking about how this will look in After Effects when I comp it all together. It's gonna look pretty cool, and I'll show you that when I get to that point. Using the F5 key on my keyboard, I'm just gonna space these out evenly in twos, just so it doesn't go by too fast. And most of the things I've animated here are not on ones, so if I have something on ones just moving, it'll be a bit jarring. But once that's done, I'm just gonna press test scene and see how that scene goes. With both the lanterns and the effects done, there it is. My lanterns doing lantern stuff and my effects doing bubbly stuff. Each of these things are done in separate scenes, but we're all done in the same flash file. Again, this is how I work, so you can basically do this in separate image sequences, separate Swift files, or different movie files. It's up to you, really. Either way, we're gonna combine all of this into After Effects 
along with the girl character in the background, which we'll do next. So for our next episode, we're going to talk about how I did the background. Thanks for watching this episode on the String Bing Workshop. There will be more to come, as always.